Section 1.5, collecting sample data. Now it's not just collecting sample data, but things about sample data. So if you collect data from what's called an observational study, then you collect the data, but you're not actually interfering with or having any effect on the subject. For example, if you were to watch basketball and you write down the points per game for a player, let's say LeBron James, then, does that have any effect on LeBron? No, you're not going to be holding him back by writing that down. But if you do alter the subjects, for example, in medical experiments, let's say a new pain reliever comes out and the company wants to test and see how well it works and if there's any side effects, what they're going to do is get a bunch of people, let's say 1,400 people, 700 take a placebo, so it's a pill that does nothing, and the other took a vitamin supplement. And then their blood pressure is measure, measured later. Well, because those 700 people took a vitamin supplement, you altered the chemistry in their body. You altered something in them. So that is an experimental study. Now to the specific sampling methods. So ways to go out and actually collect information. So the best way, although not the easiest, is completely random. So you look at the whole population. It could be everybody at Hartnell College. And then you say, well, I'm going to choose, and use, usually the letter N is used for the size of the sample. So I'm going to choose N subjects at random. So you would somehow have to get some random way of doing that. So you could show up to campus at all kinds of different times of the day and night and randomly walk around campus and randomly choose people. So that's one way. Another is called a stratified. So what you do is divide the data into subgroups. So let's say it's this time it's going to be the state of California. And so for the state of California, it's been divided into counties. So there's all of these counties around the state of California. They don't overlap. There's no gaps. And then you randomly choose some subjects from each county. So you'd go to each county, randomly choose some, go to another county, randomly choose some. There's no rule that it has to be the same amount, but you just randomly choose some from each county. Next is one that's similar to that. So let's say that you, again, have the state of California divided into subgroups. Those would be the counties. And then you decide, okay, I'm going to throw um, a dart at the, uh, the map of California. And when a county is chosen, so it's Humboldt County, the dart lands on Humboldt County, then you drive up to Humboldt County and you interview everybody in that group. Then you throw the dart again and you get... Um, Kings County, which is where I grew up in uh, Central California, near Fresno. So then you would go to that and you would interview everybody in Kings County. So that's the cluster. Next is systematic. So you've, let's say, got a list of all of the students that attend Hartnell College. And then you decide, okay, I'm going to choose every tenth person on the list. So just the first one, and then ten, go down ten more, go down ten more, go down ten more. So that's the system in systematic. And then the least uh, reliable, you can get the easiest, is convenience sampling. So you're sitting in class, you don't even get up. You just ask the people around you. You know what? Here, you hand them a survey. So it is a method, although it's not very, a very good method. And we've got one other idea, main idea in this section. So for observational studies. So in other words, you are observing them, but you're not changing them. So one would be a cross-sectional. So you basically just take a survey in one day or one moment in time, and then you're just asking them about what's going on so are you a Democrat or a Republican? How old are you today? Um, did you eat breakfast or not? And so you're just asking them well, what's going on at that particular moment in time. Another would be 
going back into the past. And so, you know, um, they, you go and ask questions about the person's past. So you're trying to um, retrospectively look back and see what happened in the past. So where did you grow up? Uh, how much money did your family make when you were four years old? That, you know, you might have to, they might have to research that to answer some of those questions, but it would be stuff about the past. And then there's long, longitudinal studies. So there um, were a group of nurses in Great Britain that I believe have been studied for 60 years. And they have provided a great amount of information um, about, you know, what they ate, their lifestyle. And, you know, over 60 years, you could then see which ones died early, which ones died of this. And you could try and uh, uh, monitor and predict um, someone's health and longevity based on that study. So that's going for a long period and then try to figure out what's going to happen in the future after that. All right, so we're now done with chapter one.